Welcome, this is Dr. Ken here with you. This is an introductory to the alternating current laboratory, the thing I call the AC Laboratory Passport. It teaches you a little bit about the basics of our laboratory training room. So let's get underway. The first thing you're going to notice around the outside of the room, under the tops of the benches, is our three phase supply. So I'll just move my cursor over the top of it. Here you can see the three phase supply. The main protection is a circuit breaker, which is also used as our main switch on off. We also have a isolator. You can see here that my cursor is isolator. And we also have a power indicator. A red light turns on when the power is applied. So these terminals here provide the supply and I'll just change my cursor. These three terminals here are our three phases. We just use a line with a circle through it to represent phase. We have a neutral and we have an earth. You will eventually get to realize that we actually have two voltages that we can play with. Uh, we get uh, 41 volts up here between the phases. For example, the white one to the red one and we get about uh, 24 maybe 25 odd volts between the phases to our neutral so our three phase power supply gives us the ability to have multiple voltages as well as an alternating voltage supply The next uh, tool we need to look at is your uh, is your digital multimeter. And digital multimeter, we only use it as a voltmeter. So even though it's capable of other readings, we tend not to use it. We can use it as an ammeter, but unfortunately the apprentices blow the fuses in them and they're fuses are worth 60 or 70 dollars a go so we don't tend to replace them so so you've got to uh, remember you need to select volts on your meter so move it from the off position to the select volts position then you need to change the mode to ac so by pressing this button here the mode button you can change the mode and the display will change from dc to ac quite often have students say, Ken, I'm not getting the right readings. It's simply because they haven't changed to AC mode. And uh, the terminals that we use, the, uh, the common terminal here and the voltage terminal here. The polarity is not important because in AC there is no polarity. The uh, energy is going backwards and forwards in both directions. Remembering that when we connect a voltmeter in an AC circuit, we're going to always be connecting it in parallel with the thing that we want to measure the voltage around. So digital multimeters, we use them in volts only. And when connecting as a voltmeter, we have them in parallel. Next is our clip-on ammeter. Now, some of the clip-on ammeters, we have a couple of uh, different um, varieties of clip-on ammeters. And you simply pass the wire through the hole here to measure the current. Again, making sure you've selected the AC range and then the display simply displays the current. So again, we're going to be wanting to use the lowest range we possibly can. 
So if yours has a 4 amp range on it, select the lowest AC range. So you clip over the lead wiring for the required circuit which I've shown you and again it has the ability to be used as a voltmeter but we don't use it. So don't use it as a voltmeter. Use it only as an ammeter. Now, some of our voltmeters, sorry, some of our ammeters are uh, not super duper accurate. So we have got into the practice of using a one ohm resistor as a way of converting current to a voltage and therefore be able to use a voltmeter to measure the, uh, the voltage. So if you can see here on my circuit, I've got a 1 ohm 10 watt resistor here, I've got a 12 volt AC supply and I've simply coming through a resistor, my wire is looping up and through my clip on ammeter, back through a lamp, from the lamp then back to my supply. So my main load is this lamp that you can see glowing here and it has an internal resistance of about 88 ohms when it's hot when it's running warm. So if I was to do my ohms law, and you can see I've put the little formula up here, I equals volts divided by resistance. So I've got 12 volts divided by 88, giving me about 136 milliamps. And if you come down to the clip on ammeter, you can see it's drawing about 0, 0, 0.13 or about 130 milliamps. Now you can see the inaccuracy there straight away because this is displaying 130 is the best it can do in milliamps. But if we look at our resistor at 1 ohm it then displays the voltage in milliamps. So I've actually got 0.135 of an amp or 135 milliamps. So you can see very, very much more accurate. So we're simply using this one ohm resistor here. I'll just change my pointer color. white and we're using our one ohm resistor as a current to voltage transducer All right transducer and why does it work because if I put one amp through one ohm, I'll get one volt developed across it. So again, just ohm's law. So through my one ohm, whatever current goes through it, the exact same proportional amount of voltage will be developed across it as what's going through it in current. So my voltage reading ends up being exactly the same as the ammeter reading and you can see it there. The big advantage here is though you'll notice it's displaying 135. So I've got 135 milliamps. So our clip on meters can be a little bit inaccurate because of their nature. If we want to be a bit more accurate in the way that we measure our current we can simply drop a 1 ohm resistor into the circuit, then measure the voltage across the 1 ohm. You'll notice here my, my leads for my voltmeter are simply in parallel with the 1 ohm, and my load is going through the 1 ohm in series. So my current measurement is in series, but my volt measurement is in parallel across the 1 ohm, 
and I can now measure the current using my 1 ohm 10 watt resistor as a current to voltage transducer in effect. Next we have our uh, main training aid that we're going to use for many of the activities and practice that we'll do and uh, at the back here where my arrow is there are actually three resistors and each of those three resistors is connected to the terminals the red the black the red the black the red the black we've just used red and black as colors the coloring isn't significant in and of itself there's no plus or minuses here and uh, they're approximately 75 ohms each and there's three of them the next thing is this big block of steel in the middle with a big copper winding around it that's our inductor uh, our inductor you'll see it's got white wires connected to it and they come out to the white terminals so our inductor comes to the white terminals and uh, it's about a hundred and sixty three milli henrys then finally on our training aid is the capacitor the cylindrical white device it's got blue leads and it comes out to the blue terminals here you can see the blue terminals and it is about 20 microfarads so these ones go to the resistors this one goes to the inductor and finally the blue ones connect to our capacitor so now you've got some idea of what our main training aid looks like for doing resistance inductance and capacitance and that's what the R stands for R for resistance L for inductance C for capacitance so we also have a gadget called a LC R meter again able to measure inductance capacitance and resistance and uh, the trick here is you don't actually have to uh, do much scaling it's very an automatic uh, gadget but uh, you do need to press the white button where my cursor is to turn the device on you simply connect it across the device so you want to measure its resistance inductance or its capacitance it must be isolated from the supply I'll say that again it must be isolated from the supply so you can't have any other currents voltages or anything going through the device so it's got to be isolated it auto ranges so it takes sometimes five to ten seconds and then you simply connect the plus and the minus again it's not important which one goes where across the thing that you want to measure and after 10 to 15 seconds it will display the value here you can see I put it across one of our resistors and it's come up with an R for resistance and 72.14 ohms in this particular case so this symbol here will change and you get an L for inductance a C for capacitance an R for resistance and over on the right hand side we can see there you can see my ohms symbol so I know this is in ohms inductance is going to be in Henry's probably milli Henry's and capacitance is going to be in farads probably in micro farads so again just need to keep an eye on the symbol and the scaling again the meter is all automatic so just to make it uh, really really clear we're going to demonstrate here we're measuring capacitance so you can see I have my LCR meter is on it's connected 
across the capacitor and it's telling me I've got 19.555 which is so close to 20 it doesn't matter and if you look where the tip of my cursor is it's indicating in microfarads so that's 20 times 10 to the minus 6 farads so there's the connection giving us 19.55 microfarads next we're measuring the inductor so I've simply moved the leads to the white terminals and we're measuring 164.08 and again if you look very carefully here you'll see it's in millihenries so our meter is now measuring our inductor and the meter reading is 164 millihenries and finally I've just put it on to show you where I measured one of the resistances and it would measure 75 ohms across red and black. The next is our digital oscilloscope. Um, as we say here, it is just a flash multimeter. It measures uh, plus or minus voltages around a center horizontal. It has two voltage input channels, in this case, yellow and blue. Vertical scale is in volts. So we have X number of volts per division. And the horizontal scale is in milliseconds. So I'll just uh, show you. So here's our screen and you can see channel 1 is a yellow color, channel 2 is a blue color. On the vertical axis this way is where we measure volts in this direction. And I've set the oscilloscope up at the moment so the center here represents zero volts. So up this way is plus volts and down this way is minus volts. On the horizontal in this direction this is time. That's all it is. We're just measuring voltage against time. Now we can control the scale for the volts and you'll see here there's a thing called the vertical. This is our voltage controls around here. I'm just putting a red line around it. You can select which channel you want to play with. At the moment we're playing with both channels, channel 1 and 2, and by turning this knob left or right, I can change the volts per division. Now I can't, can't tell if you can see on the diagram, but there's a dotted line there, there's a dotted line there, there's one there, and the same going up this way, dotted line going across, and at the moment it's telling us that channel 1 and channel 2 are on 10 volts per division. So each of those spaces, those major divisions in the horizontal direction, are 10 volts. So we're about 1, 2, 3, 4 major divisions on the blue scale. 4 tens are 40. So at the moment, that blue wave is about 40 volts. Next, let's look at the horizontal. And that's time. So here's the horizontal controls over here. I'm just putting a line around them. And again, we can control the time base, it's called. 
with this particular pot knob by turning it left and right and at the moment it's telling us that the time base is 10 milliseconds so for every horizontal division and you can I'll just draw a couple of them in there's one there there's one there there's another one there so these horizontal divisions are all each worth 10 milliseconds so for example there's a full wave from there all the way to there it's actually four divisions sorry it's about two divisions giving us about 20 milliseconds giving us a frequency of about 50 Hertz so by measuring the divisions horizontally tells us the time divisions vertically gives us voltages plus and minus so don't be scared of an oscilloscope it is just a flash multimeter that can measure plus or minus voltages against time the next meter we need to uh, have a look at is the uh, power meter so it has an on off switch I'm just pointing to it there now there's the on off switch a power meter needs has two elements to it it has a voltage set of elements and a current element basically it's a voltmeter and an ammeter in one instrument which can then multiply both those things together and tell you what's called a power factor as well as the power itself so connection of the terminals v1 v2 as their name implies and here they are v1 v2 in red and black on the bottom of the instrument uh, voltage terminals they need to be connected in parallel a1 and a2 are the current terminals they're in purple here and again they need to be connected in series the display will display in watts so that's the display up here the seven segment display and the scaling depends on what voltages have been selected and what current ranges have been selected so in this particular case we have a current range of 3.2 and we have a voltage range of 50 so the watt meter is reading from 0 to 160 watts now the display can display in the watts here or this funny symbol with the pictures of what is a phasor diagram that is the power factor so if we throw the switch over to there it will tell us the power factor on the display if we throw it back to watts and kilowatts it'll tell us what the power is on the display so it's a matter of just selecting the appropriate ranges most of the time you're probably going to be using the 3.2 or the 1 amp and you certainly won't be getting anywhere near 160 volts so you'll always be on the 50 volt scale so that's the end of our uh, little guide through instruments hope you've enjoyed that and learned a little bit about uh, the different things that we use around the AC laboratory